let's look at those who are here in the sanctuary and those who are around the globe. Look at who you're with at this particular moment. Just scan the room, see who you're with. And in so doing, allow for the presence of love within you to come out of your eyes so that what you, who you are looking at and what you are looking at, you're looking at it through the filter of divine love. Is that you're seeing the glow, the undifferentiated wholeness, the beauty, and you're entering into becoming a celebrant of the divine presence, becoming aware that we're creating a center of coherence that's emanating from this sanctuary and is embracing the entire planet. That there are individuals waking, there are individuals in Australia, in Canada, Africa, Ch China, the Middle East, all over the globe that are tuning in at different times based on uh, the time in their particular region. But we're developing a center of coherence that is allowing us to embrace the planet upon which we are living in a field of love and intelligence and beauty. So be aware that you're not just here for yourself, but as we're gathered together in this Sangha, in this spiritual community, it is having a difference vibrationally on the planet that can be measured with a technology now that didn't exist 30, 40, 50 years ago. So you're making a difference by being still and knowing that the presence of God is within you. As you have heard this morning, our theme for the month is uh, what do you represent or, or where are you coming from and what do you represent? You have heard in substance uh, that we are all coming from an eternal presence. We have emerged from an eternal presence and are continuing to unfold, to reflect and to reveal this presence according to our unique pattern. There used to be a time in which people used to say things like, we have come from God and we're on our way back to God. And that was a beautiful parochial way of thinking about it because we were very much identified with our personality and subpersonality constructs that seem to be separated from God. So we were from God, but we're on our way back to God. But we are aware now through metaphysics, through quantum reality, through deep mysticism, that we've never been separated from the presence of God, that that's an impossibility. And that would be something like the wave being separated from the ocean, though they are individual expressions of the ocean, it's never separated from the ocean. You are not separated from God. Say that out loud. I'm never separated from God. I am never separated, I am never separated from love. I am never separated. I am never separated from beauty and joy. So you're not on your way back to love or beauty or joy or the presence of God. You are waking up and having a realization of your oneness with this presence and developing the inner authority to express these qualities as you discover them, as you activate them, and in ultimately express them at an ever-increasing amplitude based on your expanded awareness. So where are we coming from? We're coming from the absolute in integrous connection with the presence that is never an absence. This is very, very important because as we move into affirmative prayer, sacred meditation, as I was discussing this morning at the Way of Meditation service, we always want to begin that we're living from an overflow. We're not living from lack, limitation, scarcity, even though that may be an experience at any particular time in our human history, it is never an ultimate truth. When we begin with the awareness that I am one with the presence of God Almighty, all beauty and all joy, and that begins, that, that is our starting point for prayer, that's our starting point for meditation, that's our starting point for any spiritual technology that we are involved in, then we're not overcoming a limited paradigm, a limited perception. We're not fighting against ourselves. We're absolutely in tune with our real self. And the path to self-realization, the path to self-love and appreciation is not peppered uh, with projections of lack and limitation as barriers in our life that we project ourselves based on our limited point of view. And that was a lot that just got said there. <laughs> but 
understand that you're always beginning with right here and right now, right where I am is the presence of God. Therefore, not only are we talking about where we are coming from, we're also talking about what are we here to represent. Same answer. We are representing, as I like to say, these sacred qualities according to our unique pattern. We remember, I've said this from time to time, that our uniqueness is our superpower. We are incomparable. There's no one exactly like us, so we do not live a life of comparison. We live a life of glowing for the presence of God according to our uniqueness, of which there is never another one of us. We're all a part of the same species, perhaps. There are a few aliens here and there, you know, there's some hybrids and all of that. However, we're all a part of the underlying oneness of the power and the presence and the love of God, but unique in every single way. So, so now you're living from an overflow and, you, and connection, but you're also living from your uniqueness. So when you sit in prayer, you sit in meditation, you are unique. Sometimes your ego will give you a lot of problems because you'll look outside yourself and compare yourself to someone else. They're getting more attention. They've got more money. They've got a better job. They had better parents or whatever the case may be, and your ego will create all kinds of issues for yourself that will create a web of confusion and allow you to think from lack and limitation rather than from I'm a unique emanation of the Most High God. I have everything that I need. I just need to discover, activate it, and express it. You will hinder yourself from comparison. Yes? It is, it is magnificent to be encouraged by other people. It, yes, it is magnificent to use other people as examples yeah, and to be inspired by others. But do not compare yourself to anyone else. Only compare yourself to your past self. So you're constantly competing with who you used to be so that you're constantly becoming more and never less than your true self. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So now you know, you have a feeling tone, that is, of where you are coming from and what you are representing. Feel into that dynamic. What is the topic for today? Inspiration. There it is. I, I, just needed, I just needed one word. So therefore, when we begin to understand where we are coming from and we begin to do that kind of inner work, there is a kind of an inner excitement that takes place about the possibility of our life. We begin to see potential and the possibility. Oh my God, I can be healthy. Oh my God, I can have all of my needs met. Oh my God, there's something about me that I don't even know about yet that's trying to emerge from the depths of me. As I said in the earlier morning service, when deep calls unto deep, deep answers deep. That that impulse within us that come in the beginning shows up as excitement and then it becomes an enthusiasm, and then it becomes inspiration. That's the real self within us peeking its head into our awareness and, and that's the real self calling itself into expression and when we embrace it, that is the deep answering deep. Deep is calling unto deep. And then deep is answering to deep when we say yes to it. So in the beginning, there's some kind of um, a little bit of excitement, but excitement is unsustainable. Excitement is dualistic, meaning when you get excitement, then you will get depression. It goes up and down. You look at the world and you see people going out, oh, I want to be excited. I want to have all these exciting experiences. And then they crash. You know what I mean? It's just, I want to get drunk. And then they crash. They want to get high, then they crash. So excitement is unsustainable. Underneath excitement, there is something called enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is in theos, meaning in God. You go to a higher level. There's something called inspiration. Inspiration is the word of God. When you are truly inspired, that means that the vibrational frequency of the Most High is activated within you. So we begin to glow and grow through our spiritual practice and we begin to live uh, from enthusiasm and inspiration. It pulls us into spiritual practice. It pulls us into sacred service. It pulls us into creativity. It pulls us into generosity. It pulls us into forgiveness. It pulls us, us into loving to love. Yet, inspiration must be coupled with dedication. Dedication. 
Dedication is, the, is how you live your life even when you don't feel like it. It means that you have a dedication to a level of practice uh, that then births uh, the gifts and the talents and the capacities within you to expand, to reveal more of the life energy. You look at any walk of life, you look at an Olympic athlete, they become dedicated to that which is going to bring forth excellence even on the days when they may not feel like swimming uh, or running, or whatever their particular gifted area may be. You look at the excellence of a, of a musician, they become dedicated to excellence, regardless of how they might be feeling on any particular day, if they want to reveal excellence. Uh, whether the individual is a teacher, whether the individual is an artist, whether an individual is an orator, whether an individual is whatever is their calling is in life, unless there is dedication, then you cannot overcome uh, the hindrances and the blocks that get cleared out when you begin to go to another level of consciousness. I was thinking about this this past week. I had gone to the BioCyberNot technology last week, the week before Easter, to um, retool my awareness through intense two-day long periods of time, meditational periods with biofeedback and polygraph machines in order to monitor my emotional content and my brainwave activity. And of course, there was, it was, in, it was intensity, there was uh, breakthroughs, there was expansion of consciousness, and always there is the proverbial ego that comes up and wants to block and so, as soon as I finished that on um, that a Saturday, Friday, I can't remember. Uh, I'm not really good with time. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I flew back on Saturday here to Los Angeles to be to speak on Sunday for the three services, and I just kind of just hit the ground running. You know, I came back and got a couple of hours of sleep, and got here on Sunday and did the three services. And and, uh, uh, and anyway, by Tuesday, by Tuesday or Wednesday. There was just an onslaught of all kinds of stuff that was coming up in my awareness to be cleared out. And I tell you, I felt defeated. The emotional content that was coming up in my awareness, uh, felt, I felt like it was just, I know it was ego. Because there was another a, a, a birth that was trying to happen in me, but I felt defeated. I felt like, oh, wow. Now, I knew what was going on, so I was, you know, to use the military term, being forewarned is forearmed. So I knew what was happening, but it still did not negate the feeling tone of defeat. And the, the self-criticism was running wild. Any criticism that I received from anybody was, like, bigger than what it was within me. And it was just... Oh my God, what am I doing here in the world? Is it making any difference? Is, it, is, it, is, it, is, is what I'm doing having any effect anywhere in, in my own spiritual community, in the world, whatever? And it was just defeat, defeat, defeat. Yet, I did not give up my dedication. I still got up and I still meditated. I still prayed. I still went inside. I still did uh, the fundamental practices that ultimately allowed an inner yielding to take place so that I could transcend the ego seeking to keep me down, seeking to keep me small, seeking to keep me from seeing who I was as a, 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 a filament of light and joy and liberty and the peace. And then ultimately there was the breakthrough of the inner sunshine that was seeking to express itself. But that would not have happened without dedication, without a practice, without uh, doing what I do regardless of how I feel. I'm saying that, that inspiration, excitement is unsustainable there must be a continual work to have some level of inspiration, the Word of God coming through us, and then that must be coupled with dedication. There must be at some level, if you really, 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 really want a sustainable joy, a sustainable happiness not based on external circumstance, if you really want a sense of well-being in which the external world of people Places, things, circumstances are not determining your mood. Understand what I just said there. 
because people are living in this sea of constant up and down because they're allowing the external world or their perception of the external world or their perception of other people to determine their moods. No, you want to be spiritually liberated. You don't want the external world or your perception of external world or people, places, and things and circumstances to determine your happiness, determine your joy. No, there is a place within you that is so powerful. There's a place within you that is joy itself. There's a place within you that is love itself that does not come from the world of effects and circumstances at all. It is the glow of the infinite presence that is within you and that by means of you wants to express itself more fully and more completely. Say out loud with me, if you will, I am willing to be spiritually liberated. I'm willing to live in joy. I'm willing to share my love of loving. I'm willing to feel that all of my needs are met. It is done unto me as I believe. I take responsibility for that. I'm living in the liberty of loving. Somebody scream about it. And so, so there is inspiration that leads to dedication that then leads to true manifestation. Now, of course, when you hear the word manifestation, sometimes the mind will go immediately to having our personal needs manifesting. We'll, we'll have the harmonizing prosperity. We'll have the physical health. We'll have the parking spaces. We'll have... You know, whatever it is that we're seeking to manifest and understand, of course, that those are the beginning stages of manifestation. That's parochial. That's beginning. The, the, the having, you're actually learning the laws of the universe by practicing on yourself. You see? So you begin to learn uh, that there is a sacred mind, law of mind in action that reflects where you are living from, what your conscious and unconscious statements are that are coming out of your mouth that you begin to learn how to manifest according to your personal needs being activated, but that's just a start. Ultimately, you're learning to, you're coming into true manifestation, which is an unfolding of your soul faculty, where you begin to see that you're going from just primarily personal wants and desires of which many of those wants and desires aren't even yours. They're coming from the world. They're coming from familial and parental fantasies and, and they're coming from all manner of things coming to the world telling you, you need this to be happy. You see? And so ultimately in the beginning you learn through these sacred laws of manifestation that some of the wants that you want aren't yours. They're not coming from your soul. They're just coming from ways you've been hypnotized by the planet ways you've been hypnotized by, the, by, the, by, by what's going on in the world, but ultimately you learn true manifestation, which is the unfoldment of your soul that, yes, has your needs met. Yes, allows you to live in divine integrity with the wholeness within you. Yes, allows you to, to live a prosperous and healthy and, and successful life, but, but ultimately you're living from a much larger context. You're living uh, from a, a, a much larger way of being on the planet. You're knowing that you have come to this planet not just to have the right car that you need to drive around, but why do you have a car? You know, you, you, not just to have a house, but why do you have a house? You're not just coming to be, have a physical, healthy body, but why? Because you have a mission. You, you've come here to absolutely embrace is that there is something in our species that's evolving to reflect and to reveal the realm of ever-expanding good on earth. It's called heaven. It's called the beloved community as described by Dr. James Lawson and Martin Luther King Jr. It's, you're, you're coming to have a much larger point of view and you've practiced that level of manifestation by using your own life as an experiment. If you experiment on yourself personally to see that it works so that you're living in a much larger space so that you become undaunted uh, by the things that we see on the planet. We see the, the death. 
we see the racism, we see the bigotry, we, we see the scarcity, the lack, we see the homelessness, we see the degradation of the earth, we, we see all of this that is occurring, but we become undaunted. Just as you become undaunted on the individual level when the ego is giving you information to keep you small, you become undaunted on the global scene when the media is giving you the lowest uh, vibrational frequencies of the human dimension. You become undaunted because you're living in a higher vibration that becomes more real to you than the very chairs you're sitting on. You are stronger and more capable than you think you are. You are not merely a human being searching for spirituality. You are a spiritual being infusing your eternal nature into your human incarnation. You are stronger than you think you are. And so with this awareness and this more expanded purview, you, your, your, your manifestation power increases. Why? Because your, your, your consciousness and your perception is more expanded. You're not just living to get through the day. You're living to change the world. You see, to bring that higher frequency to the world, therefore, your, 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 the wind <laughs> is at your back because as we're leaving the Kali Yuga age, so to speak, the so-called age of darkness and the vibrational frequency, the planet is raised and, and so many things are working in our, be, our favor vibrationally. When you expand your perception beyond selfishness, into selflessness, then that which you are involved in with, your business endeavors, your entrepreneurial endeavors, your creative endeavors, become infused with this energy because you're not shrinking it based upon myopic little wants that you think that will make you happy. No, you are living for God. You're living for peace. You're living for joy. And you get the added things. And there's harmonizing prosperity. And things go your way. And there's luck. Luck is living under cosmic knowledge. And things work together for your good because they always are. But are you working for your own good? Are you in your own way? Are you shrinking your perception? So we are moving. Uh, from uh, definitely inspiration uh, that births itself out of mere excitement to a true dedicated life. Now, yeah, I've, I've termed the term back in the 90s the word blissipline. And I did that because oftentimes when we talk about dedication and discipline, it seems to be like, whoa, it's so hard. You know, it's like, oh, I've got to be disciplined. Oh, I'm not going to have any fun. You know, but, but no, 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 no. When an artist has a level of discipline around their painting, around their sculpturing, around their music, around their athletic prowess, there is a love. They, they do it because they love it. If you remember the movie Chariots of the Gods where they juxtaposed two runners, one that was running to win and one that was running because they loved running. And there was the, 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 the spirit of the living God moving through this being that just loved to run and feel at one with nature and all of life. That was a blissipline. And when you enter into a dedication based on your love, when you sit in prayer because you love to love, you love God, you love peace, you love joy, then your dedication becomes an outpouring of your love of the spirit. And it overcomes the ego's pretentiousness to thinking that it's all ma how high and mighty to keep you controlled and manipulated into a limited paradigm. So when you hear dedication, it's not about, oh, I got to be dedicated so hard. No, you love the presence. I, this is what gets me through often. I will sit and I will remember all my moments of just being in love with the presence. And it transcends the surface mind's uh, temporary, like on 
Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever that was, temporarily feeling defeated uh, emotionally by the things of the world, you see. And it was just the love that opened me back up. Oh, I just love the presence. And then whoo, I was free again. Ooh, and and I mean, can you imagine 37 years of speaking every Sunday? Three times a Sunday, going out to speak at all these places around the world, and you know, and I still love it. I still love meeting new people. I still love traveling, not necessarily packing and unpacking, going to the airports, waiting in the airports, and all that. But I'm learning to love that too. <laughs> I got a little bit more prayer around that now. <laughs> but I do remember one time I was I was trying to have have a meeting with um. There was two people that I, my schedule was so uh, tight, I, I couldn't get these meetings together. And I remember at the airport, and uh, something happened, and there was a delay. So the, the flight was delayed, so I'm waiting at the airport. And there was a person in the airport that we'd been trying to meet for weeks. And we were both stuck in the airport. So we, we said, oh, this is our, God did this. <laughs> so we stopped, and we had a meeting, and I overran the meeting. I missed my next flight. And then there was the other person in the airport that I needed to meet with. So then we met. And then finally I got on the pl next plane to go out. And I got to my destination on time. And so sometimes even a delay is not a denial. It's just like things being worked out so that you can do what you're called to do, even if it's beyond your plans. I remember one time writing a lyric for the song. And the, the lyric was, God's will is just beyond your plans. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me listening to me. Listen to me listening to my higher self. There is excitement, but it is unsustainable. There must become inspiration. Inspiration is the word of the almighty presence that you hear in great music. You see it in great choreography, great art, great educators that are inspired. You see it in all of nature, oozing through the trees and through the ocean and through the ground in Pachamama. You see it, it inspires you. And then inspiration must be coupled with sincere dedication that allows you to transcend your momentary emotional glitches. The emotional glitches is the condensation of limited perception that's condensed itself into an emotion that you identify with that you'll say, I am sad. I am whatever it is and forget that it's just coming to pass. It's just passing through your awareness and then you make judgments and decisions based upon that. You stay inspired, and then through inspiration, there comes a sincere dedication, a divine bliss of plin that allows you to, to, to stop and do your inner work, even when you feel like it, when everything is going good. Woo! And then when things feel that, oh, you're just trudging through mud, and then you're embracing true manifestation. The manifestation that comes from I'm here to allow my soul to unfold and I want all my needs met. I'm here to allow my soul to unfold, that I may share my gifts, that I may be an instrument to birth the realm of ever-expanding good on earth. And I want my ideal employment. And I want my body healthy. And all of the things that we do want in this human dimension, there's nothing wrong with wanting those things in the human dimension. But in the beginning stages, though, are, those are beginning things that we do to prove to ourselves that our destiny is not controlled by that which is outside of us. Our destiny has been loaded and coded within us before the beginning of time as a unique expression of infinite potential, just as the destiny of a rose seed carries with it rose bushes and more rose bushes and more roses. It's within that rose. What is within you? What are you here to represent? Where are you coming from? Ask yourself that on a regular basis. Couple that with dedication 
even if it's just a few moments a day, even if it's just setting your technology to go off silent, you know, just not real loud so it disturbs everybody, like every hour on the hour, every time you hear it, you just, where am I coming from? What am I here to represent? You might be in the midst of something that's got you off center, and then you, oh, what am I here to represent? Is what I'm about to say or do, is it, is it assisting in birthing the realm of ever-expanding good? Is what I'm about to do or say, is it assisting in bringing heaven to earth? Is what I'm about to say or do, is it assisting in bringing peace to the planet? You just just not, not, not judgmentally, not beating yourself up. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. No, just awareness, 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 the awareness. And then after a while, those little bit of pinprick, uh, dedicated moments become a kind of a lifestyle. And then it births into a way of living where without a reminder, your breath is just reminding you there's more to you than you think you are. You're not merely the son or daughter of your parents. You are the son, a daughter, an isness of the eternal fabric of ultimate reality. You are coming from the divine. Say it, I'm coming from the divine. I'm here to represent the divine and nothing less than that. I'm here to celebrate my way to awareness. And it's happening now. All of my needs are met. Everything is working together for my good. I feel it in my bones. I'm so grateful to be here. I'm thankful to have this incarnation. And I bless everyone that triggers me into a greater awareness of who I am. That might be a little difficult. We'll have to repeat it. I bless everyone who triggers me into a greater awareness of who I am. They are my great teachers. I love them. I love them. I love them. I pray for them. And I rise in the spirit of the Most High. Somebody scream about it. We are here to be liberated and free, not just manipulating external circumstances according to our limited points of view. Ooh, that's called hell, baby. <laughs> and you can, you can see that when you follow uh, the lives of the so-called rich and famous at times. They seem to have everything and all, and so many of them seem to end up in trouble. <laughs> you know, they're, they're drunk, they're high, they're, they're, they're being sued, or they're suing somebody, it's so litigious. It's like, oh, what a life. No. We are here to be free and prosperous, free and healthy, free and generous, free and creative. That is why you are here, you see? Oh, I think I'm going to be quiet right now. I think, I think we got it. Did we get it? Did we get it? We got it? Oh, good. Let us move into prayer together. Let us rise up in consciousness. Let us expand our awareness. That is, the greatest way, one of the greatest ways to expand our awareness is to be grateful. Oh, even when it's hard, let us just be grateful. If it's difficult, find one little thing to be grateful for. Oh, you may have someone in your life that when you think about them, they just bring a smile to your face. Oh, I'm so grateful that so-and-so's in my life. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for them that, oh, regardless of what's going on in my life, I just, they're just, they're, very, they're just always there for me. And maybe that person's on the other side of the veil. Maybe they're on this side. But just find something, please. Something to be grateful for, to be thankful for. This expands our awareness. 
We become dedicated to gratitude. We become dedicated to thanksgiving. And in this consciousness of gratitude, that becomes our attitude, allowing for the infinitude to take, take over our life. We recognize the presence now, closer than our breathing, nearer than our hands and feet. Ah, so grateful. So close, so near, closer to us than our personality, which is temporary. Closer to us than our sub-personalities, which are temporary. Our real life and our real being is emerging now through gratitude. And our oneness with the presence is becoming more apparent. We remember and re-remember those powerful moments in our life where we just felt so at one with life. Perhaps we were standing on a mountain and looked over the horizon and felt, oh my God, I'm one with all of this. I remember going to the to the beach every day as I used to work for the mayor of Los Angeles many years ago, Mayor Tom Bradley, and I would leave the downtown office and go to the beach and stand on my power spot. I'd take off my tie and my suit top and my shirt and I would breathe and I would feel the oceanic presence. And I remember saying back in those days, as I was feeling the intense ecstasy and bliss of that oneness, I would say, one day when I'm in my calling, it's going to make me feel like this. And you know what? That's what I feel right now. That's what I feel like every time I get to pray, every time I get to speak, every time I get to teach. I feel like I'm in that moment of seeing the ocean because the oceanic awareness is taking over. Just feel those moments now. And we feel one with God, one with love, one with beauty. Remember, we don't worship a guy in the sky. We worship the love that is God, the peace that is God, the joy that is God, the intelligence that is God. <coughs> Closer than our breathing, nearer than our hands and feet, it's us. And from this sense of oneness, I have the privilege and the honor to speak the word, the living word of God announcing itself to each and every one of us. Let there be freedom. Let there be wholeness. Let there be wellness. Let there be well-being. Let there be joy. Let there be harmonizing prosperity. Let there be perfect healing. Let there be right action. Let there be safety. Let there be security. Let there be all needs met for every being on yes. the planet. Yes. Our yes. consciousness is not merely for ourselves or for our kin. Oh no, we're transcending, catch this, we are transcending religionism. Religionism is loving religion more than God. Come on. Come religion, on. Re loving our religion more than we love God. And there's so many people like that have gone in, into Christian nationalism and all manner of nationalism. You can call it whatever. Every religion has it. They love the religion more than they love God. Oh, that's a detriment to the world that we want to live in. Don't ever allow religionism to be a hedge against your mysticism. No. We're here to allow religion to return us to the source. Yes. Not to be a great religionist, yes. but to be a great freedom person. We're free. We allow the religion to take us to the transcendent. Oh, that becomes imminent within us. Oh my God, I love what just got said. I love it. Listen to what I'm listening to. The great presence, the great power, the great love. It's revealing itself as the vibrational word of freedom. Are you willing to be free? Are you willing to be prosperous? Yeah. I mean, for real. Are you willing to be prosperous? Are you willing to be joyful? Are you willing to be generous? Are you willing to be creative? Yes. Are you willing to be forgiving? Yes. Are you willing to be compassionate? Yes. Are you willing to love loving? 
And in this consciousness of willing, the ground is fertile. I speak this word that we may be free today, liberated. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Deep is calling unto deep. And deep is answering. Feel it. Take a deep breath here. Feel gratitude. Feel thanksgiving. Feel joyful appreciation for life. Brenda Lee, help them feel it. Marianne, help them feel it. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the joy he gave makes us one this day the heart of God that discloses oh, and God walks with me and God talks with me and God tells me that I am it's all And the joy that we share as we're waiting, waiting there, none other has ever, ever known. God speaks. God is speaking right now. And the sound of it's voice. That voice is inspiration. Is so sweet. So sweet. That the birds hush. Woo, the birds just gotta be quiet. Mm. Oh yeah. And the melody that he gave to me is within my heart is ringing oh it's ringing God's walking mm. with me God's walking as us God's talking God's talking as us talks with and me God tells me I am. I belong to God. And the joy we share as we're waiting, as we're waiting there, none other. No, 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 the has ever, no, no, the has ever known, known, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Feel into that right now. Allow our heart to talk and to listen to the presence of God that's walking and talking to, through, and as us. We enter into a space of holy prayer. W-H-O-L-L-Y. It's whole soul prayer. Connection with the infinite. We join our practitioners who are holding us in prayer. We join the practitioners who are embracing all of those who have called our prayer ministry, who have written our prayer ministry as well. And we enter these names into that field of prayer right now. Okay. 